Hi, I'm Ben Canning, and this video is going to, or micro lecture is going to be on impulse and momentum. As always, the products you need to do are three bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and any follow-up questions. Okay, so this micro lecture, impulse and momentum. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So we've talked about the idea of forces, and it shouldn't be too counterintuitive for us to um, look at the idea that if we apply a force for a period of time, meaning a second or two seconds or three seconds, um, that this is going to cause something to accelerate. Now, if you think about it a little bit more, if we apply force for one second versus two seconds, then applying the force for longer is going to cause it to accelerate more. Or in other words, it's going to cause it to change its velocity even more. Um, this idea, this idea of a force applied for a period of time is an impulse. Now, in physics, impulse uh, is force times a time, meaning it's the force you're applying times the period of time you're applying it for. Now, it equals mass times change in velocity. And we'll have a video later on that will explain why those two things are equal. Um, but essentially, whatever force you have times the time is going to give you the mass of the object times its change in velocity. There is no official variable for impulse. Sometimes people use I, but usually that's not um, a proper form. Um, so you're just going to have to use the equation form in this sense. The units are Newton times a second, uh, and that's because of force is in Newtons, and time is usually in seconds, so we get Newton times a second. There are other units that are acceptable, like kilogram times meter per second, um, but I find this one to be easier to use. So that's what an impulse is, or at least one definition, which is a force applied for a period of time. Now we're going to look at a second definition, which is we've talked about this idea of momentum before. And we know that momentum, P, is equal to mass times velocity. So a change in momentum would just be mass times a change in velocity. So really what we're looking at here is the idea that impulse is just a change in momentum. And that gives us to our second and more official definition which is impulse is a change in momentum. And so oftentimes we'll just write an impulse as delta P. Um, that would be kind of the uh, one kind of more official way to write it, but usually you end up having to do a calculation with mass times change in velocity or force times time. So that brings us to the kind of last slide here, which is equating all three of those. So all three of these are different ways to calculate an impulse. If you know the change in momentum, then you also know a mass times a change in velocity, and you also know force times the period of time. Um, all three of those things are equal, so you can rearrange this to have F times T equals change in momentum, or you can have mass times change in velocity equals change in momentum, or you can equate force times time equals mass times change in velocity. All three are fine. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of notes, so one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms.